Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. It's time to join the conversation. Welcome to another episode of Hard Headed. <laughs> um, Matt Amos here with Chet Sears and Troy Trussell. Sponsored by Trussell Media and Admiral's Pennant. Check them out on the webs. Dot coms. Uh, today, we're going to have, have what's on uh, Chet's mind. We've got our top three bottled water brands. And then uh, Troy is going to bring us a good word. Let's we'll start out with Chet. What is on your mind? Well, there's there's a lot. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's so much on my mind right now. It's hard to even sort it out. One of the things that I'm pretty upset about is, uh, have you ever noticed in Hollywood, this is a side note, by the way, <laughs> whenever somebody pulls a gun on somebody like behind their back, then it always makes a noise. Have you ever noticed that? Mm-hmm. Like, like what, what kind of noise? Like, whoosh, whoosh. they're just like, even when they're not cocking it, but it's like, I pulled a gun out and now there's a noise oh. to let you know I pulled a gun out. Oh yeah. Yeah. You've like, noticed that? Yeah. I have noticed that. You haven't noticed that? No, I guess not necessarily. What I what I do notice is that uh, a gun clicks, but it's a uh, it's a strike striker fire. fire. They're like, when it's empty, it's like click 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 click. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that or you hear them cocking the hammer, and it's like that doesn't have a hammer. Yeah, that's a lot of times. And then I like it when they always chamber around in a shotgun before they shoot a pump shotgun. Mm. Even after they've shot and chambered another round, the yeah. next time you see them in a scene. <laughs> You just eject the round, fool. <laughs> anyway, I was just thinking about that the other day. All right, so what's so up? I've got this this adventure. Um, I may have bitten off more than I'm willing to chew on this deer stand. Did I tell you guys about my deer stand? Yes. No. Um. It's uh. It is a massive. So we we've we've uh. Basically, the the lease that we're on is there's a lot of CRP in it, and a lot of deer move through it. But this just you can't get anywhere where you can see the deer and get it get a good clean shot. If you see a deer, you're not seeing the whole body, all this kind of stuff. So I, I found this. Um, I found this uh, it's like a quad big, pod is what it's called. Uh, box blind game winner. Type. No, no, no. It's an all metal and. Um, the uh, the stand itself, it's like metal with the legs. You assemble them, bolt them together, and it's got a metal grate, and it's got a post in the middle for a seat, and it swivels around, and you get a shooting rail that goes all around that. So I bought that, and I'm like, oh, this, this will work because it's easier to set up. Even if it took forever to assemble. We can put it out there. You, two guys can move it. Like, you can pick it up and move it, and then you have these big stakes to put the legs in the ground and whatnot. Set it out in the middle of the CRP. Hunt it out of that thing. Um, One season? No, three. Wow. Three, three seasons. And, um, they, uh, I got to respond to this text and they, um, <laughs> I'm glad that text I was a, more important. We, have a, was we have a mutual friend driving through, uh, Louisiana and they stopped in Ruston for the night and he's like, where do I eat? Oh, and so I got to respond. This is oh, yeah, urgent. Yeah. That, urgent. that is urgent news. He better be a listener. Uh, yeah. Hot rods is where he is, where he's going, which is the former barbecue city. Yeah. Yeah. And I he had said you had to get the beans. I mean, there you just, go. Okay. Boom. All right. So um anyway, one year we go out there, you know, and the spread is left up all year. And then um it was after the spring it had blown over. I'm like, oh that stinks. Stand it back up, put the stakes back in it. That's 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 that. Last year, before hunting season, went out there and it had blown over and flipped and rolled and <laughs> Like it got caught up in a tornado, crushed it. Like it's the legs are bent and there's no way this thing's standing up and it's not safe. All right. It's just, it's shot. Like, well, forget this. I'm not buying another one of these because they're pretty expensive. Not like a Did you kill any deer out of it? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it was worth it then. What kind of question is that? Not any big ones. Then it was worth it. Big deer. Big deer. (laughs) I I don't hunt horns, Matt. I don't hunt horns. You can't eat them. Uh-oh. big deer he hunts horns even when it's Massive not deer. when it's not deer season yeah he's, he's saying shed, shed hunting. hunting so uh 
I'm like, well, I'm going to build. A, I'm going to build a box blind. I'm going to. And, and back in the day, my dad was a beer a beer stand a deer stand builder. Like he'd just come up with new concepts, all kinds of crazy concepts, and he would just design them and, and build them. So it's typically started with a four by four pallet. You know, the pallet, the, the shipping pallet. And then one time, the way where he wanted to put it, the, the way it needed to face on this little road and a power line or whatever he's like well i'm not going to put four corners for the roof because i need to swing the rifle that way so he made a tripod roof like at a at a thing and then another one he was like i don't want it to have such a high wind load all the time and he made it where you could undo a couple of wing nuts and collapse the roof fold it down um on top of itself all he, just all kinds of stuff i'm like hey I'm going to, you know, keep the, keep, keep my dad's memory alive by building a box blind, you know? So I get my buddy, my buddy, Tim and, and Jeremy, the guys I'm on the lease with and like, Hey, I think I'm, I'm just going to build one. Like, and, and they're like, Oh, okay. Is it going to be as big as the quad pod was? Cause it could comfortably have two hunters. The, the seat in the middle of the post was actually for two. It was a two seat system. So you'd have to swivel at the same time, but you could change the backs where you could face the opposing directions. And it was, it was a nice little setup, but it was kind of, you know, comfortable, but tight. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll make it big enough for that. Um, let me, uh, let me, let me figure that out. So that's, that's not a four by four, right? That's, that's we're going to have to get bigger than that. And I'm thinking, okay, is that like a four by six? Well, six out of four. Yeah. I ended up, we're going six by eight here, fellas. Yeah, yeah. So if we all three wanted to hunt out of it and one of our kids wanted to take a nap in a cot in there, they we got room for that too. Like it's <laughs> massive. So I, I had this idea last deer season, and, and so I started out. I built the floor, and I, when Gander was going out of business of so their hunting gear, I went there and I bought those. Uh, they got these special brackets that you bolt on for deer stands in a four-by-four post slides up in there and you it's, it's just you know easy structure it wasn't gander it was a yeah gander outdoors gander rv yeah was it Gan- that well i guess that was gander so, so the rv store that they went yeah. to gander whatever it is they had a hunting section and they're like we're closing this hunting section out oh, i remember because i still i'm still reaping the benefits of the uh the, i bought you some stuff there no i went and bought i told you to go buy stuff there so i went and i bought your uh, every last bucket of lucky buck yeah they had because it was on sale for seven bucks yeah yeah you're welcome i already used all mine that i, I bought a lot I, yeah i bought some <laughs> and then i told you so anyway i had i had enough lucky book time to get the platform built so we went out there put the platform up it was heavy got it up and then ran it just football season came on i was going up to too many games in manhattan and just time got away so when deer season came around, I just put a ground blind on top of the platform. And so we were running screws down into the – hold the ground blind down and got up in there, crawled in there. There's plenty of space. Had like a porch and all that kind of stuff because six by eight is pretty big. So this year, Tim and I are like, dude, we got we to gotta get off our butts and make this happen. So uh, over a few weeknights and a weekend here or there, I build out the walls – and so I build a wall, I get, you know, get the design. I got graph paper and everything. looks like I'm real formal doing this. And then the first one, I go ahead and skin it, build the stud walls, put the, the plywood on the outside, and then I go to move it, like put it out of the way so we get the car in the garage and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, ooh, this, this is a pretty heavy wall. I don't know if I want to do this with all the other ones, you know. So put that one up, build the next wall, build the next wall, build the next wall. So my buddy Tim and I, and we have this, I've been talking to you about how do we anchor this thing, right? Because this, that's, that's an important, important. thing. Everything's Big windy. Time. So Matt gave us a few ideas on, on anchoring and, and we, we've settled on the anchor it directly under it. No, don't run a whole bunch of guy wires no. everywhere. Bear with me, Matt. I'm barren. And so that's, that's what <laughs> we decided to do. Well, anyway, we get out there and go and he it's we were out there for all day we had all day scheduled to be there had some other stuff to do and he's like what do you want to do first i said dude we we're, we're it's a high it's a high wind day and we're out here early 
we need to get those walls up. And he's like, oh, it ain't going to be nothing to get those walls. I said, dude, we got that one skin. That's going to be, it's going to be a sale as soon as we try to lift that thing up there. So we went ahead and assembled everything. And it was that the one with the plywood on it was really tough to, to get there, um, get up there. And then we got, we got the rafters hung and we're ready to put the roof on it and skin it. But that you know, wasn't the plan for the day. And we uh, did some work for the anchoring, but we didn't anchor it yet because there's all kinds of stuff, sacks of quick creek and drying and all this stuff going on that we worked on, but weren't able to secure it. And where we are right now is I'm in between having put that thing up, knowing there's a sale on that. And we've had two red flag, 50 <laughs> to 60 mile an hour wind days since you've been there i've been there and i fear with all my being the that that thing is blown over and shattered to a thousand toothpicks nope the wall's gonna be fine no it, it may rip out of the floor no I, I, it's gonna it's gonna top the whole thing over oh because you haven't secured it down <laughs> right Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I was praying. Gone. To. Give me some hope, man. I was trying. Yeah. Uh, uh, she gone. But I, I, I mean, but I <laughs> will say that that once you put it all back together and I don't know, I like I, I'm limited on what I'm able to accomplish between now and hunting season. September's right around the corner. Three months. I know. No, four months. Four months. Barely. Yeah, four months. I've got stuff to do too, but I will say this: if if uh, if it comes down to it, um, I am somewhat free from now until August, um, the first of August. Anyway, well, go plant for me. I'm not going to go plant. I, I'm if if you're going to you offer help, uh, well, put, I was going to say I stuff could, in the ground. I could help you get those walls up there with the uh, the tractor. I could just lift them up. But might make well, it a little I, easier. Well, here's the thing. If it just tipped over and like didn't disassemble itself, we used hurricane straps and everything on the right. I mean, it's should be still together. There ain't no way we could pick that thing up. I'll have to have your tractor to get that thing tilted back up or a truck. How, what do you do with a truck to lift something up like that? So you, you, uh, pull a uh, kind of like a pulley type deal, but you, you tack the, uh, the back legs down. Yeah. Where you're going to pull from and then um, run because you don't have a roof on it yet, right? I do. I'd not like a solid core roof now. So then you'd run like a, just a, just a toe strap up over the top down to that like the bumper so. and then just back. It. Yeah. Oh, I've done it. A, a and few, then it's going to have to not a like, hundred times, but I've done it a few times. But then I'm not going to be able to move it where it needs to go. Like well, this thing. Well, yeah. But at that point, then you just to, strap it around the base and then drag it. The, the base is massive. These yeah, legs are going to um, six by eight. I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm nervous about this. I haven't lost but, sleep, but I'm hey, pretty but close. You won't have to worry about it if it's in a million pieces. All right. If it's in <laughs> one piece, then you got, you got a little bit more to worry about because it's harder to move. You got to go there and light that thing on fire. Just forget I ever did it. Cause the, that was the tricky part when I was lifting my, uh, my redneck blind, which doesn't weigh as much as, as yours does with all that wood. Yeah. Um, but when I, when you get it to that point, of where it's going to tip and settle you're worried you're yeah, worried about it it'll roll it'll yeah. keep going so um but that's why we you know we got it up there and we staked those legs down um the best we could and then uh so when it tipped hopefully those wouldn't come out of the ground um but that was dicey even with that one and mine it was like holy crap this thing was yeah. expensive i don't want to break anything on it when it tips this way, which fortunately we had a uh, one guy with no legs in a wheelchair. Um, we had me and then we had another guy and uh, somehow we made it work. It worked out. Yeah. Well, so but I, if you need the tractor, let me know. I literally went from, man, I'm so excited about this deer season. Cause it would be awesome. My buddy Tim's even like, I'm sleeping in there, dude. It's this I'm going to bring a Mr. Buddy and, Cause it's massive. It's, it's big. I was thinking about putting a camper door in that thing 
you know, because, you know, you're watertight and lockable. But those things are 400 bucks. Uh, you believe that? That's ridiculous. That is. Um, Yeah. So anyway, that's that's what's been on my mind. It's been weighing on me. I hope it works out. I'm going to I'm going to turn cartwheels. And then you, all this anchoring stuff, you know, so your opinion matters nothing in comparison to my wife's because my wife is a structural engineer. Mm -hmm. I showed her everything. It's, it's this thing is going to be able to like, you can go there to seek shelter after I'm going to get done with it. If it's still standing, <laughs> right. Yeah, I got this thing figured That's out. That's a big tensile if. strength, compression strength. Oh my gosh. This is, it's well, going to be, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have it where it can handle dynamic loads, wind shears. So, uh, so here's my thing with, uh, you're strapping it down the way it needs to be strapped down and the way that I set it. Yeah. It's not like I came up with that on my own. Mine actually came from a, an engineer, Ron Yeah, is the one who told me to structural you know, engineer. Yeah. So you know uh, about snow load that uh -huh. metal buildings for however many years in a multi-million dollar. I'll yeah. He knows exactly it. what he's doing. I'll allow it. Matter of fact, when, it. when, uh, when I wanted to build, um, the, uh, the cover, for my deck on my hunting cabin. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can I just, uh, do you think if I put like a, uh, um, one of those, uh, C channels or, a, or, a um, just a square piece of, uh, uh, four inch metal tubing. And then I bolt that up there to the, to the house. And then I run the rafters on top of that and then screw them down and then put sheet metal over the top of that just for a simple cover for the top of that. I go, you know, Ron, do you think that'll work? And he goes, no, <laughs> no. He goes, he goes, because, uh, uh, snow load, he goes, wind, wind load and snow load are the same. He said, so, uh, he goes out there, you don't have much wind, but you got, or much snow, but you got a lot of wind. So you always got to be prepared for the wind. And he goes, you got to prepare, be prepared for the updraft. And, uh, he goes, so if the wind comes through there and it goes up, he goes, it's going to lift that thing. It's going to tear your entire cabin apart. Yeah. And, uh, he goes, he goes, give me, give me a week and I'll get back to you. So he came back a week later and he had these plans drawn up like literal plans yeah. with like exactly what you needed and everything. And my simple little cover for my, for my deck was going to be $10,000. And I said, <laughs> sorry, no, I'm not doing that Ron. And he goes, well, I'm pretty sure I've got some scrap laying around here somewhere, you know? And I'm like, not that much. Yeah. He goes, but really the only, you know, he goes, what would really be good is if you just put uh, you just put a cover over the whole thing, you know, because then you don't have to worry about your roof leaking or anything else. And you yeah. just you got this really nice cover. It stays shady and yep. blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that would be great. What's that going to run me? He goes about the same price. And I was like, Nope. Nope. <laughs> Not doing it. Well, anyway, there we are. I'll let you guys know my saga. I probably won't podcast about it unless I'm, I've got emotional damage. You should send pictures and then we can just post them to the Facebook page of your. Yeah. When you're your, out there. Your, either joy or no. your, your complete despair. No, when you're out there, just video it. As you're walking, as you're walking up, up your, video, first, your, your first impressions. Video your face as you're, you're walking. You'll hear up. my, you'll hear my crying. You'll hear his potty mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's massive. Oh man, that's cool. All right, well, let's get into a break. Are you driving traffic to your website? Do you have an engaging homepage? Better yet, does your homepage have a video? We recently created a video for a client about his business and the services they provide. Since he placed the video on the homepage of their website, he has had a number of clients specifically say they decided to use his services because of that video. At Trussell Media, we help businesses create engaging videos to host on their websites, email to clients, and use in their social media marketing. Contact us if you're interested Creating a video for your homepage today, trusslemedia.com. Fill out the form at trusslemedia.com slash contact. Let us help you tell your story through video. And we're back with our top three bottled water brands. This is going to be interesting. Troy, lead it off. Number three, Pure Life. Wrong. Oh. Wrong. <laughs> wrong i don't mind it it's cheap it's refreshing non-flavor non just the just the, the one water. that tastes like dirt yeah <laughs> that's the one all right that didn't make my list number two ozarka i'm drinking it right now me too no wait we got proudly some. proudly texan brand yeah. The Ozarka brand. Yep. It's good. It tastes really good. I like it. I, I, it's, that's not a bad one. 
Um, it's pretty cheap too. Um, number one, Sea Force by Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris has water. I've never drank it, but I figure it could kick all the water other waters butts. Yeah, so, Chuck Norris has water, so I put it on. It, he actually does. One. I remember hearing about that a few years ago. It is off of his ranch land that he owns and they bottle it and ship it out from his ranch right there in Texas. Awesome. Awesome. Chuck Norse water. It's called Sea Force. Yep. I'm going to have to order some now, see if it's any good, but I'm sure it is. It's got a little kick. Probably tastes a lot like Ozarka because they're both in Texas. Maybe. I don't know. Chet, what do you got? Well, I'm going to start with great value because that's what I drink the most of by the case. Terrible. I normally have a case in the back of my truck. It's Terrible. trash. It's better than Pure Life. It no. is better than Pure Life. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Pure it's, Life it's is like, like on the butt. bottom of the, uh, you know, it's right next to the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Number two, Arrowhead spring water it's got a maroon label that's if i have my preferences when i'm at the at the you know the gas station that's what i'm reaching for number one and i've had this c force it's fantastic i love it i was i was i was you know oh, you're playing with you. i've Sabbath actually had it i right. bought it when i was down there on a lake fork trip nice. it's great it's really good water it comes from a spring in texas like a spring on his property. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he helps he and his wife help manage the harvesting of that water and bottling and all that. It's 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 fantastic. They should sell it in glass bottles. Why? Because glass is better for you than plastic. It's uh I I've never eaten either one of those. Yeah, but you get plastic microplastics. Microplastics in the water that no, you, you drink. Get it if plastic is healthier than or glass is healthier. I don't eat either of them. Oh, I, oh, I got it. It was terrible. Yeah. It was a good dad joke. You like that? But yeah. So he should yeah. bottle it. And I mean, I think they all should. Let's go glass. Um, Yeah, it's good stuff, man. I'm, I'm a fan of uh, Sea Force. It's red. Sea Force. It's pretty cool. Okay. Matthew. Number three. Kirkland. The Costco water. That's pretty good. Because that's what I have every day, pretty much. That's, still? We get it at home. Oh, okay. You know, you still get it at work? Yep. Oh. Oh, okay. Yep. Right now we have, uh, I don't want to say because it's a pretty valuable asset. We got around, si we got around six cases at the office. Right okay. Now. Pretty big deal. Yeah. That's how you know you've made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number two. Essentia. Bless you. That's the name of the water. It's got the little black, white, red logo. Oh, yeah. E-S-S, -S, Essentia, like essential. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. That's it. That's it. A pH balanced. Yep. Whatever. And you can literally taste, pay, pay too much for it. Taste the difference. Like uh, I... No, but you can taste the difference of smart water because they add electrolytes. electrolytes. I don't like smart water. It's too expensive. Yeah, I, I bet in a blindfolded taste test, we wouldn't know. I bet I would. I bet you wouldn't. Dude, let's have one. Let's have one. Let's do it. You wouldn't know. We're going to do it. I would be able $5. To I'll put $5 on that. Okay. Hey, next we'll live it. episode, and we're, we're going to have a water I'm not betting that I would contest. know. I'm betting you won't know. Oh, I'll know. I'm telling you, I can't tell the difference. You give me the you give me the waters that I drink. I'll know. I'm going to give you the waters that I choose. No, they get, if I haven't had them, I don't know what they are. <laughs> okay, deal. I'm not spending five dollars on a bottle of Essentia, though. That's two dollars. That's bougie water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever. All right, what's number one? Well, I was going to go with some volcano water, but what's volcano water? It's a Hawaiian water. Oh, <laughs> that comes from a volcano. Water doesn't come from volcanoes. I said the same thing. Lava comes from volcanoes. There you go. I've man. said the same thing. Which is 
magma that has come to the surface. Magma. But my number one is uh, Evian. Yeah, I'll I'll tell you, and I, I that didn't make my list because I had it in Europe. I, the one I remember, like, oh my gosh, this water is so good. I was I was in high school in in Europe on a trip, and we were we had struck out on a few restaurants, a few meals for a couple of days in a row, and things just weren't going well. And I just remember being real thirsty one day, and I'm got some Evian. And I'm like, this is the best water I've ever had. But th- that's the only time I felt that way about it. Now, now what I will say is, it, it, if we're going to do a taste test, it may be difficult for me to differentiate between. Essentia and Evian, because the uh, it it almost tastes like a thicker water than when you drink. I'm gonna have uh, to pour it in something because I'm not giving you the bottle to touch. No, no, no. You pour it in whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. All right. But it's a it. Those two waters seem to coat your mouth a little bit better than um, Costco or any of the other. You need a glass, plastic, straw, no straw. Glass. I don't drink anything out of a straw. Okay. Except pop. Coke. It's called Coke. I don't drink Coke. I also don't snort. Coke is pop here. You were just drinking a Coke. Literally. What is this? <laughs> Look at you got one right here, man. It's not even open yet. Hey. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't drink Coke. I can't trust this guy. <laughs> Jeez. What in the world. I was, gonna, right. I was waiting for one of you two to catch that. Hey, uh, <laughs> have you guys ever used your uh, the, sur- the search function? <laughs> Did you shake it? Uh, no. <laughs> no. On your uh, your pictures? Yeah, I just mm-hmm. found out about that. Did you? It's awesome. I use it a lot now. It's crazy. That's scary. It's AI, baby. You didn't know that? No. I've been doing that for the... I mean, I'm now, I, I, was, I was in the same amount of shock that you guys were when I found out about it. Yeah. I'm here for John Connor. Because I, I I was going through my phone one day. That's like three three years ago, at least three, four years ago. And uh, I was like, man, I'm, I'm looking for this picture of the stupid deer and one of the guys in camp was like well you can just go to that little search bar and type deer and it'll bring up yeah all the deer in your phone i and looked I like, for what? i looked it's for scary. A, my license plate number today using it because i was like, like oh, i bet i got a picture of my i license knew plate. i had a picture of the the case of uh chuck norris water so i just went to my pictures and searched waddle and it every picture with any bottle in it showed up yeah like wild. instantly yeah you can type uh i was looking for a picture the other day and I, it was a, uh, um oh my 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 yard yeah then it say, saves your searches doesn't it and so i, I clicked uh well now i was looking for a picture of my socks and i couldn't find my socks <laughs> so i just put green and then it came up yeah you, uh, you, you know what's awesome let's let's run a quick little test here fellas yeah look recently searched i did fish oh 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 tattoo do fish video do camera. fish and then tell me how many photos show up we're about to have a contest 39 for fish no it 64 says 164 for fishing oh yeah right there sorry how many show up in yours 475 what i've got 934 total photos of fish that's not you though that's other people so uh, he got me to be. I was about to smoke all you guys, but oh, he's, you over, he's over here taking. He's <laughs> no. like a fishing trip photographer. I got two hundred fifty six. Look at that, and they're me holding Look fish. At that little peacock bass, dude. I caught the smallest fish of my life at Lake Fork my last trip. Yeah, because uh, my mom was like, "Send me that photo of Noah and the big fish." fish. Yeah, so I just sent it to her in like ten seconds. Sweet. Anyway, so listeners, if you didn't know that, you're welcome. Now you know, if you did know that, you know that I'm way behind the technologies. Yeah, bad boy. That is pretty awesome. All big, right, big well, fish. We can't look at pictures because Troy gets nervous about dead air. I do on the phone. I do on the radio. So we're gonna podcast. move into a, a good word from Troy. All right. So the good word is gift. G I F T gift. So. I mean, when people think about religion as a whole in itself, think about earning. People think about earning, and how can I be a good person? Surely I won't be a bad enough person to get sent to hell. Surely I'm not as bad as that person. Like, what do I have to do to get? What, my, what, what I can have to do? I do to, to get 
my yeah. reward? What do I need to do to get to there? But I'm here to tell you. Believe. There's nothing that you can do because your salvation is a gift. Salvation from Christ, from God, is a gift. There's nothing you can do. So, for grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. That is Ephesians 2, 8. And so you can't, you can be a good person, but that, that's not going to get you the gift of salvation. So. You don't, you can't earn a gift. No, a gift is given to you. You have done nothing to deserve it. So I wish I'd have known that that's what we we're going to talk about because I would have gone back. There was a there was a guy who uh, who had who had been a Christian for a long, long time and, and struggled um, with works. Mm. And um, he goes, when I when I finally came to the realization that there was nothing that I could do, and he had a really it was a really good story of of and really great write up of how that changed how his thought process changed in his faith once he once he did that it was it was crazy i wish i'm gonna have to go find it now i'll send it to you guys later but it was super good read yeah eye opening for me in some ways too you know because it's like all these things we do that we we try to you know it's uh, like it's in it's in our nature you know to right. be to be like check check the box do things yeah because that's that's the way we've been conditioned yeah. You know, and this is, you literally have to do nothing. Yeah. Or well, you have to have faith and believe. But, but you don't have to do. But you don't have to do. Right. And that's where, that, that was the difference in his thought process was he always thought that, the, that, that having faith meant doing. And it's not, that's not what it is. So. Yeah. And this, uh, this kind of came but from. That, that faith will make, make you do things a certain way. Right, but it's not doing those certain. It, so it was, just, it was just a flip flop of thinking for him that was just yeah. really cool. And this came from a sermon series that we're doing at our church. Uh, it goes over three questions that the Pharisees asked Jesus, and uh, it got into. I think this past Sunday was the question of you know why are your uh, why do you eat on the Sabbath and the his disciples were picking the grain and, and eating. And so they were, you know, charging them with working on the Sabbath. And so, yeah, they just, the fair and how the Pharisees just built laws around, around everything because they wanted to keep the law holy and they wanted to do good and check the box. The old way. Yep. Yeah. But Christ came not to, not to abolish the law, but so, to fulfill yeah. the law because the law points people to Christ. So, Because the law shows you you can't do it on your own. Yep. You just can't. It's impossible. And it's a gift. All awesome. Right. All right. Good Thanks word. for listening. Thanks, Troy. Yeah, you're welcome. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.